Hello, fellow preppers. We are going to talk about the best shit hits the fan bartering items you should be stockpiling. This was supposed to be a list of the top 20 things, and hopefully Dan doesn't get upset, but I just had to include 30. I kept looking over the list and trying to see what should come out, and they were just all too valuable not to share with you. So we're going to work our way around my kitchen table and check each of them out. One of the first items on the list would be precious metals. That is just a nice, solid, hard sterling silver ring. You can wear your precious metal bartering materials. Yes, it would make you a target if you are walking around after the shit hits the fan. But you can take it off, slip it in your pocket, and make it part of your everyday carry. You're going to be a target if you have so much as a bottle of water on you at that point. So, you just need to hide your most valuable items. And next we have hat and bandanas. Hat, bandanas, sunblock, anything to protect you from the sun rays and from getting sunburnt. You'll be doing possibly a lot of walking to get to your bag out location. You'll also be doing a whole lot more chores outside. Then we have a knife and a sharpening stone. One is not very good without the other. Eventually, bullet stock piles will run out. It might take some longer than others, but knives have a value beyond being a substitute for guns. They can be used to hurt quietly, kill quietly, to cut through brush, depending on the kind of knife you have. This is just a standard boot knife. You can have a machete, a bowie knife. I would suggest lots of types of knives that people will be in need of these. The one thing to always remember is that when you barter something like a knife or ammo or anything like that, it could turn around and be used against you. So that could be a bit of a dangerous bartering item, but a valuable one all the same. Then we have chapstick, which really goes along with the sunblock type items. It's a smaller item. You could barter for something little or big. You need to have that in mind when somebody wants to barter with you or you're going to barter with somebody else. You don't want just gold because you can't trade that for something very little without really losing out in the deal. So vary your bartering items from small to medium to large. We have batteries. Those are also a great bartering item. And we also have some cleaning and personal care supplies. Um, you can stockpile toilet paper. I'm sure people would barter for it but that takes up a whole lot of space. Your best bet for personal use post shit hits the fan would be to go to Tractor Supply, Burl King, and buy one of those sprayers like they're supposed to be used to put chemicals on your crops. And keep it clean, fill it with water, and make yourself a portable bidet. So we have some soap, some tampons, those types of things. Um, not right in the thick of things when things are falling but as shit hits the fan wears on and during the rebuilding stages, those types of items would be definitely something that people would be willing to trade something small for. Then we have cleaning supplies. Um, <laughs> I found a bottle of 409 to give you a typical cleaning supply in the group. I use more natural things to clean with, uh, rubbing alcohol, vinegar, witch hazel, because they also have cooking, food preservation, medicinal properties. So. I like to get preps that you can use for more than one thing. Another great bartering item, of course, is first aid supplies, uh, small kits, big kits, individual items like the over-the-counter Tylenol. Quick clot bandages will be great to barter with. Uh, tourniquets, 4x4 bandages, any kind of thing that might help somebody cover up a wound. Cast iron cookware, camp cookware, anything like that. People won't be cooking in their kitchens anymore. No matter what type of disaster occurred, the power grid is eventually going to fail. And then we have a two-way radio, an emergency radio, which of course is going to require battery or charging, which gets you into the whole generator use, maybe biodiesel fuel. Eventually, that those are going to run out of battery depending on what type of alternate power source somebody has. If somebody has an alternate power source, they probably have a radio, but theirs might break, might get lost. So whatever the reason, um, that might also make a nice bartering item. Then we have a gun cleaning kit. And as I said before, when you're trading anything with weapons, it could come back to haunt you. 
but skills are something you also should, also should consider for your barter. Uh, blacksmith, uh, gun repair person, carpentry, gardening, of course anything to do with the medical profession. A horse farrier, because cars are not going to be running for very long, I won't think, during most disaster scenarios. So maybe you don't want to barter your supplies that you've stockpiled, maybe you want to barter the service. Then we have a sewing kit. Uh, clothes are going to need to be mended like they once were. Um, people will scrounge and find things in homes that have been left over, kind of a walking dead scenario there. You can go out and source whatever you need. But being able to mend your own clothes um, would definitely be beneficial. And we have ammo over here. Always makes a great barter. You know, it's, it's a risk, so it's one you have to decide if you're willing to take. If you're the person who has quite a bit of goods, you might decide you don't want to barter any ammo. But if you have ammo and you're in need of something else, medical care for a loved one, you know, something that's definitely a dire need, trading your ammo might go a long way. And we also have natural medicine supplies and a nice muddle back there to make them. Learning how to make your own natural medicines would be a great bartering service besides being helpful to keep yourself and your loved ones healthy. We have nicotine and a lighter. I didn't necessarily mean to place them together, but lighters and matches will definitely make great bartering materials. Nicotine will be one of those comfort items, just like when times are bad or during prohibition when things are going badly or there's something you can't get, its value goes way up. So would somebody trade for cigarettes? Oh, yes, yeah, somebody's eventually going to trade you something for cigarettes. We have sugar and flour. Their uses are obvious. But besides the cooking, uh, sugar can also be used to help treat gunshot wounds and for some other, other simple home remedies. And we're going to go on around the table here. I hated putting boots up here. It's so bad luck. Technically, boots are not on my table. They're on firewood. And they're muddy. We've been living in a mud bog for like the last month and a half here. So those are my barn boots. But boots, shoes, shoelaces, anything like that, things are going to get worn out a lot more quickly. They're going to break. You definitely could trade footwear with somebody for something else you needed. A bow, nice silent weapon. You can make your own bolts and arrows. Um, you also can make your own ammo. I would really shy away from making ammo for somebody. But then again, if you're trading and desperate, um, you know, trading, you know, trading a bow, trading ammo, something like that is definitely going to be beneficial to the other person. How beneficial it is to you, time would only tell. Firewood. When you're chopping up your firewood, take a little extra time this summer and chop up some more because that's how people are going to stay warm, cook, boil water to purify it, boil water for medical needs. It will definitely be a great bartering item. Then we have manual hand tools. Power tools are not going to work for very long, if at all. If it's an EMP, they're not going to work immediately. A manual drill. They do still make those and I look for it out in the garage and it must be put up with the preps. That would also be a very good barter besides the standard nails and hammers. Then we have diapers. Even if you don't have a child in your family, stock up on some diapers. Learn how to make some cloth diapers if you sew. Babies will be born and will, of course, be alive at the beginning at least if shit hits the fan. Whiskey. You cannot ever underestimate its value just for the sake of a stress relief, yes, but also for medical purposes. So booze always makes a great barter. And yes, there are baby dolls in my little barding video here. Dolls, race cars, books, fingernail polish, comfort items. As time goes on during a shit hits the fan scenario, you know, um, society hopefully will eventually rebuild and any kind of item that brings normalcy, especially to a child, will make a good barter for a parent they have something else to trade. It's not a dire situation. Nobody's going to trade their food for a baby doll. But at Christmas time, 180 days in, if shit hits the fan scenario, somebody would trade you for these non-essential items. And beneath the toys is a blanket, uh, easiest one I could grab off the grandkids' bed. So blankets, sleeping bags, anything of that type make great barter. Cold weather gear, gloves, coats, extra thick socks. We have some socks here also. And we're back around towards the front. We have flashlights, obvious uses, make great barter. And we have a canning jar and lids and rings. There's Dimetrius Earth in my jar right now. We're doing some natural warming with the livestock. The jars and rings can be reused, the lids can't. So if you're short on money or space, 
you definitely could always just stockpile the lids. We have lamps and lamp oil, which kind of goes along with the flashlights there. Anything lamps, lamp oil, flashlights, some type of a light source will make great barter. And I skipped over my very first item and one that's definitely going to be a good one is seeds. Seeds, gardening, hand tools, knowledge of gardening, um, anything like that is going to make very good barter. People need to grow their own food. If they're starving, they're not going to want to trade for seeds right that minute. But as time goes on, during the shit hits the fan scenario, or somebody who has ample of something else might be willing to trade for some seeds so they can continue to grow their own groceries. And hopefully, if they want to survive and have their loved ones survive during the whole disaster scenario, they'll also be growing their own apothecary.